Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all our lovely viewers for tuning on today's uh, program. So I have a bunch of questions to um, ask you before uh, we begin into today's program. Have you ever felt emotionally exhausted in a certain relationship? Have you ever felt your self-esteem uh, get contaminated? Do you see yourself as a people person and uh, do you always turn out to be the one sacrificing your mental peace and harmony for others uh, happiness so if you do feel uh, some of these uh, you know points that i've uh, mentioned out it means that you're probably going through a toxic relationship or you're dealing with someone in a toxic relationship because a toxic relationship contaminates your self-esteem, your happiness, and the way you see yourself and the world. However, not all toxic relationships are easy to leave, but being aware of the signs will make it easier to claim back your power and uh, draw a bold, heavy line around what allowed into your life and what gets closed out. Uh, usually, toxic relationships hinder one's personal growth, uh, they breed negativity, and uh, they make you a pessimistic person. They also uh, somewhere distort the idea of a healthy relationship, uh, leaving one not to be able to trust anyone. And overall, they affect your entire mental health. So um, it's so important sometimes to understand whether you are in a toxic relationship with someone what does it look like and uh, let me just point out over here that toxic relationships are not just limited to marriages they even happen in normal relationships for example it could be um, as a sibling or as parents or even as friends or within our communities so I have a very special guest joining me today who is an expertise in her field. She, uh, her name is Sarah Gulam Hussein, and she's a psychologist. She's a trauma therapist, and uh, she has founded a mental health and human rights platform called Sazesh. And her current campaign involves understanding children's rights and development. And she will be sharing from her point of perspective that what does a toxic relationship look like? And what are some of the red flags that we need to be aware about when we are dealing with certain people uh, who, are, who have toxic traits in our daily lives? So without much further ado, I would like to welcome um, my dear sister, Sister uh, Sarah Gulam Hussein on board. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. It's a pleasure for having uh, you take your precious time, Sister Sarah. Um, I know you're keeping very busy, but I'm thankful to you for joining me uh, on Youth Matters on today's program on Hidayat TV. And uh, thank you for uh, uh, coming up with this topic. And you said that let's bring in a current, fresh, timely topic uh, where we can identify what a toxic relationship looks like and how can uh, people uh you know uh help themselves if they are stuck in a relationship as such what are certain steps that uh they can take to avoid being in this sort of a relationship so let's start first off by understanding uh, how if we were to define a toxic relationship what does it look like yeah it's it's a very important topic definitely you know the buzzwords of the last decade has been mental health and toxicity is very much a part of that. So I, I, I really hope that we can light on it, inshallah, you know, in our own collective communities. Um, toxic relationships generally can, as you said, can occur in any particular relationship. This is not related to specifically a marriage or a marital relationship. You can have it in any relationship and it's defined by a set of behaviors, you could say, or set of symptoms right when generally when there is an imbalance in a relationship it can become toxic when you notice that a relationship is straining you it's causing you to feel anxious it's causing you to feel unsafe 
you know it's kind of taking a lot of energy to maintain a particular relationship or just to be in a particular relationship that's when you have to start considering am i in a toxic relationship or is this relationship filled with some toxic behaviors um it's important to note that not all toxic relationships will have abuse in them so abuse is also very much a part of toxic relationship but not all toxic relationships can have abuse in them however all abusive relationships are toxic right so if you have if you're in a relationship that has any form of physical abuse any form of emotional abuse any form of psychological abuse that's a very much a toxic relationship you need to start considering you know what are those particular toxic traits um just to give you a couple of examples if there's a if you're in a relationship with someone or if you have you know, like a sibling or a family member or a work colleague who constantly calls you out constantly embarrasses you tries to demean you or disrespect you in any way immediately you have to realize that's toxic that's a toxic trait okay if you have someone who's always um let's call it for the sake of the discussion let's say the other person right so if the other person is being very um negative all the time very pessimistic always you know not contributing anything positive not being helpful or supportive that's also very much a symptom of being in a toxic relationship if the other person is um constantly you know belittling you or trying to explain certain behaviors when you draw them out um and try to put the blame on you all the time or try to never take responsibility for their own actions that's a trait of a toxic relationship so there are many different things you know besides abuse there are a lot of small things that can be considered toxic another very important one and i think this is one that we see most common is control controlling behaviors are toxic so if the other person in this relationship is very controlling wants you to do things a certain way wants you to be a certain way dress a certain way talk to certain people spend your time in a particular way that's toxic you know because at the end of the day each of us have been given our own time and it's our choice how we spend that so or how we you know present ourselves our relationship with other people is very much our own um area of decision making right and if anyone else is trying to tell us what to do or how to be then that's considered being toxic yeah if if that's an irony though know, because uh, you know usually when we tend to see such sort of scenarios within our communities for example you said uh let's take basic examples the way i want to dress or the way i want to talk to somebody or uh I want to go out with somebody, but if I am dated and you know told I shouldn't be doing uh, this in a certain manner, and for example, if I disobey or if I go against that, then it's seen as a sort of a uh, disrespect, and uh, that you know this girl doesn't have. For example, our elders would usually put in in words such as you know she doesn't have any manners, right? Like anelakan uh, na tiche, you know something like that. So uh, you know. Uh, I I liked how you put it out that you know it's our own decision making sometimes and it's not just about all the time uh going out of your uh, boundaries or you're disobeying or disrespecting somebody it's your choice and you know, when someone tries to you know dictate you and you know tell you to uh for example uh, act, if someone tells you to act in a certain manner all the time then that uh, that comes under the category of being uh, uh of being a, as a toxic uh trait so i i i i also agree to this point that you know we need to uh be aware of uh this point sometimes we don't realize it because uh, our communities normalize it the society normalizes it so we don't understand you know anyways um for example uh, you said that this is not just limited to uh marriage and you gave out examples about for example it happens in among siblings or amongst friends would you like to share more views on that or give example how can 
one uh, look into the warning signs or red flags when it comes to a friend circle in general? Yeah, um, there's loads of examples. Um, I'll tr I'll start with the friendship. So sometimes you can come across friends that have toxic traits, you know, and you may not realize it until you realize that or until you observe in your behavior that you're behaving a certain way or you're saying certain things and doing certain things to be um, accepted or to have the least amount of conflict with the other person. So in, in a school environment, let's say, or with friends, you might go out of your way to do certain things that you'd never do before or things that make you very uncomfortable. You might find yourself agreeing with things or opinions that you don't necessarily agree with and say, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, that's right. But actually inside you're like, no, I don't agree with that at all, you know? So it's like you almost become a different person to try to fit into that friendship or fit into that relationship right um on the other hand you could also let's say you have your own opinions and you don't do that but when the other person tries to hurt you for it or tries to um make you feel bad for not following what they're trying to say then that's also you know very much a toxic relationship so let's say you're trying to be individual you're trying to be yourself you're standing by you know, your own decision making, but you're made to feel guilty for it, you're blamed for it, and you're, you know, um, sometimes call different words or isolated, you know, people, um, people in school environment may kind of push you away and say, oh, that, that girl has a problem or that boy has a problem, just to stay away from him, stay away from them, right? Mm -hmm. So that is very much toxic. And how you bring that up that, you know, um, a lot of people, when you are saying your own opinions or where you are trying to be individual, you're kind of pushed down, you know, you're kind of told, oh, this, this person has a big tongue or, or, you know, they're, they're very disrespectful or they don't know their place in society, you know, stuff like that. Um, and that's very negative. That's a very negative way of seeing things. If someone's trying to express their thoughts, whether they're right or wrong, there's a better way to deal with that, right? If they're saying something that, okay, let's say they're saying something controversial, right? Is it really going to help the situation if you start belittling them, if you tell them to keep quiet, if you, you know, just completely insult them in that situation? No, it's not. Instead, you're just going to be being told. Right? So there's a Very way true. to deal with it. It's kind of reminding me of um, one of the traits. Of, so one, one of the names of Allah is Allah, which means to be subtle or be gentle. Right? And because we're Muslim, we try to incorporate that in our life. And this is one of the way we can do this, is try to be gentle with everyone, no matter whether you agree with them or not, no matter if they're you know, challenging the way you're thinking or, um, or making you feel a particular emotion. Because sometimes, let's say in that friendship situation, you're, the other person does not like what you say, you know, or they feel angry about it, they feel a bit frustrated, that's an emotion. And because of that emotion, they lash out at you. Okay. It's okay to feel that emotion. It's okay to feel angry and frustrated at what someone said. At the end of the day, we are emotional beings. Allah has gifted us with emotions, right? It's a very normal thing. But before you use that emotion to lash out, consider that there is a better way of dealing with it. You know, there's a better way of trying to understand that emotion and not taking it out in a very harsh or unkind way to another person. So that's a bit on like friendship, and that can apply to siblings as well. Um, but when it comes to siblings, I think it also depends on family dynamics, because you've grown up together, you know, you kind of set a precedence, how you behave with each other. You are constantly sharing space, so you know each other's strengths, you know each other's weaknesses. I would say, one thing between siblings that I get most often is when one sibling uses the other sibling's weakness against them.
you know, because you're sharing space together, you know a lot of intimate about each other's lives. It's very common to, when you're yeah. angry, and when you want the other person to feel it, you'll just use that weakness against them. And that's very toxic. It's very, very unhealthy to do that because what you're telling the other person essentially is, I don't care that you're sharing this with me. You know, you're telling them that you mean little to me. And that's, it just adds, you know, to, to that particular dynamic, to that relationship. Because once you go that far, it's very hard to come back. It's very hard to resolve that situation. So before you use someone else's weakness against you, against them, consider, would you want them to use that weakness against you? Would you want them to kind of put you down for what you're trying to improve in your life? And that's something that you need to consider as well. But those are like a range of, I can talk about this forever, but these are just a few examples on, you know, how you can see toxicity in different relationships. Thank you, Mr. Sarah, uh, for sharing this point. It's very true. Um, what I think what really starts or kickstarts uh, in a toxic relationship be it with friends or even among siblings is sometimes also jealousy i mean uh, i think it ha it happens more when it comes to the friend circle i want to put it that way obviously when it comes to siblings you you, you know you it's a i would call it a minor jealousy sometimes but it gets sorted out but uh, when it comes to your friend circles or um it could be even uh family friends or cousins uh so you know uh what happens is that Probably if you are, uh, you know, studying together, for example, probably uh, if, you know, you are uh, attending mosque together or something like that, and maybe one stands out better than the other. So, you know, that sort of sparks uh, a, a trait of jealousy and uh, that jealousy in turn uh, turns into a, a toxic relationship because now, you know, as you said, you tend to lash out on every single thing. That, that person is uh, you know doing you wouldn't like it you take it as a negative connotation and uh, you don't know yourself but you know you you tend to become a toxic person overall in that uh, journey now the question appears that when it comes to husband wife relationships yeah people who are couples so they are also very intimate of course th this is the most intimate relation of all the other relationships and uh, Sometimes when we see these kind of traits emerging between the husband and wife, okay, in certain relationships, for example, the abusive ones, the ones where, you know, there's a lot of controlling behavior happening from either of the side, it can be the, the male or the female, right? Uh, it's, it's like both ways, uh, uh, especially nowadays. So why do the people still remain in these kind of toxic relationships? That's a very good question. Um, and I do want to just reflect on what you said that a little, uh, a little bit. You said that in, it can be both the man or the woman who can be toxic in a relationship. I think a lot of the times when we talk about abuse, your mind immediately goes to the man, right? The man is being abusive. That's not true. In, in, in my experience, I found my fair share of both right you you can be anyone can be toxic anyone can be abusive you know because it goes back to the time when we were learning about relationships so from that young age when you're a child you pick up things you pick up the relationship of your parents you pick up the relationship between yourself and the teacher between yourself and the friends so when you're picking these things up you can sometimes pick up toxic traits so it's not just specific to men women can be toxic as well women can gaslight can be abusive it it's across the board right um but specifically to answer your question it's hard that's the easy answer it's very hard to come out of a toxic relationship an abusive relationship because one you're constantly being demeaned belittled disrespected anytime you try to stand up for yourself you're immediately shot down you know and that can really attack your self-esteem that can attack your self-confidence your sense generally can attack your self-identity so you don't know who you are as a person 
And then there's the controlling element, which means all your actions and behaviors or most of your actions and behaviors are controlled. So if you start thinking about a life outside of that toxic relationship, you're stumped. How am I going to live? How am I going to breathe? What am I going to wear? What are people going to say? You know, who am I outside of this relationship? And sadly, most of the time people answer that question with no, I'm no one outside of the relationship, which is very sad. So people choose to remain in that toxic relationship. In other situations, there's no choice. So let's say you're a sibling, sibling relationship or a family relationship. There's no choice but to remain in that toxic relationship you know we cannot cut that relationship um the only way you can kind of come out of um, a toxic relationship or the easiest one i should say is friendship you can easily distance yourself from a friend or from a work colleague right but even with marital relationships there is so much stigma around divorce a lot of stigma around divorce <laughs> i've had people tell me um I cannot get out of this marriage because the marriage committee in my community does not support me. They don't believe what I'm saying. Mm. I've had people tell me that divorce because of abuse is a Western concept. It's not an Islamic concept. And these things are really shocking, mm. you know, because no Islam doesn't tell you that you should be in a situation yeah so nowhere in islam does it tell you that you should be in a situation where your body and your mind are being damaged or being hurt you know we are not allowed to hurt ourselves our health is the most important thing in islam to the point where there are so many caveats in islam that there's things you're usually not allowed to do but for health purposes you're allowed to do them so that you can protect yourself and look after yourself so if you're staying in that relationship because of stigma or because of what other people are saying you have to consider that you are important right looking after yourself is important but that's also another thing another reason why people stay in because they're not in a relationship where their own health is prioritized your own mental health your own physical health is not prioritized in a toxic relationship because it's all to do with the needs of the other person the needs of the other person are more important than your own needs and so what happens is you just learn to always serve the other person and not serve yourself so when you realize that self-care is such a difficult thing for you to do you might want to consider maybe i'm in a toxic relationship Maybe I just am feeling guilty for looking after myself because of this toxic behavior, you know? I kind of like to... And, uh, um, yeah. I like to explain it as every relationship is a balance, right? You have to have a balance in every relationship. Um, when there's an abusive person in a relationship or a toxic person in a relationship your balance kind of goes like that right and the one person starts mm -hmm. becoming heavy the other person so they're pushing them down and pushing them down until until there's nowhere to go so when you're in that kind of situation where you're so scared you're so pressured you're so you're always looking behind your shoulders you're walking on eggshells you're really trying you think more about the other person than you think about yourself, right? And it's very hard to come out of that. Yeah, um, I just, I want to add a point here. I feel that sometimes this, uh, this is caused or inflicted uh, because of the roots of our culture. Um, and you know, it starts from, I wouldn't say home, but also like community, because you see when, uh, if I want to, for example, take care of myself, if I want to care for myself, I don't know why, but I would hesitate. I would always think about others, maybe because I was always taught to be this way from, uh, you know, a certain age or from childhood. And, you know, then um, you see how uh, there's also this phrase that goes on that, you know, girls should always be perfect. Um, boys should always be brave, you know, so uh, 
when when you know you have these words and phrases running in your mind as you grow and you become you know a woman and then all of that as an adult you know you you don't want to fail yourself because of the expectations and the standard guard that has been risen by the people outside it's not you i mean you uh, you want to take care of yourself but at the back of your head you might think oh i'm 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 probably i'm becoming selfish when it's actually not uh you you are you become selfish when you destroy other people's happiness when you destroy other people's mental peace and you know i'm sorry to say this but in within our communities i don't think that this point up to today is understood and that is why our generation seems to lack that sort of motivation and emotional support that really needs to come uh from within uh family circles from within our uh community circles or society circles that's where we need to you know break that that generational trauma uh, i don't know if uh, i'm pointing it out the right way but that's what i feel uh, as an individual experiencing over the past years what i keep seeing and experiencing when i hear other sto- uh, stories of youngsters and um be it men or women Uh, and that's what they they're, they're scared to even share their rest of their feelings because at the back of their head they're, they're thinking that you know what's going to happen next you know so i i feel bad hearing sometimes to these things and why aren't we making that change why isn't that change being applied uh today is is very hard breaking sometimes That's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Um I I have to agree with you. Definitely it is very much rooted in culture because if you look at Islam it's constantly encouraging us to look after ourselves. Constantly encouraging us to, you know, this concept of taking baths, this concept of even where does ghusl come from? Ghusl is a form of self-care, you know, preparing your musalla and going to pray. That's a form of self-care. Meditating, you know, doing um doing reflections and ponderings that's a form of self care islam is very much a self care a pro self care religion right but when it comes to culture we're kind of there's this element of it that's to do with being silenced why so that you make the least amount of noise possible you make the least amount of conflict and i think i think a lot of that comes from the fact that as women we have to be a certain way to be acceptable for marriage you know or to be acceptable to fulfill that role but what happens after marriage that's the question i like to ask is if you're only thinking that marriage is the end game you're way off tangent okay yes marriage is a part of islam okay and islam says it's half of your deen but it's not your whole deen Okay there is a greater purpose of why we're here at the end of the day we're here to be Allah's representatives the representatives of Islam the representatives of our 14 months. It means we're here for that right and so our behaviors and our um the way we treat people in relationship just the way we treat people in jail is reflective of that. so it's very important to consider that if you're telling someone off or demeaning someone just because they're trying to look after themselves they're trying to fill their cup so to speak then that's is that really the right thing to do you know is that the right thing to do are you going to go out of your way to make someone feel guilty because they're trying to replenish their energy they're trying to put themselves in a frame of mind where they're looking at themselves so that they can present their best face so that they can be in the right frame of mind for what they need to do So this culture Now, of uh, silence Sarah, culture of sorry sorry uh, I I was just pointing out to the same uh, uh uh point that you mentioned sorry and I just wanted to interrupt that for example if you realize that you know your relationship with this person is not healthy how can I make it better so what what would you advise short pointers if you would want to share Um there are a few things that you can do. So let's say you're in a situation where you've realized I'm in a toxic relationship, right? Or 
the other person in this relationship is being very abusive, is being very toxic. Um, thing to do, and the most important thing I would say is communication. Communication is very important. Most of these issues can be easily sorted out with just having open and honest communication, right? And this kind of goes to what you mentioned about this culture of silence. Because when you notice there's a problem, the first mm -hmm. thing your friend will tell you because of our culture is hide it, put it under the carpet, it'll sort itself out. Inshallah, magic will happen and this will stop being a problem in the future. But if you don't communicate, you don't address this problem, it's not going to solve. Just keep building and building and building until you become so resentful, so so hateful of this person that you've become in this relationship and we don't want that you know we don't want to get filled with these negative emotions with hate and resentment so communicate it you know not in a harsh way not in a way to say oh you're the one who's done this you're the one um although sometimes in anger you can say that but try to try to communicate it in kind of a very gentle way like i said in a way that um can be constructive, right? And then the other thing, and the really important thing is try to be assertive. So if you realize that you've said this quite a couple of times, but the other person's just not listening to you, the other person doesn't, either it's not getting through or they have their own mental health issues, they're not listening to you, then you need to continue being assertive. Okay? And I don't mean being assertive in a rude way, but in a way to say that this is how I feel about it and no matter what you're going to say or no matter how you're going to spin the story or blame or whatever it is that they're doing, you're not going to stop feeling this way about it, right? You're allowed to feel these emotions because emotions are just a way of your mind, your heart communicating with you. If you're feeling angry and frustrated about something, your mind and heart is telling you something's not right. That's why you're if sad about something. Yeah. Something's not right. If you're yeah. feeling fearful that you can't yeah. even say something to this other person, something is not right. So you're allowed to feel that. And you're also allowed to communicate that. Yeah. And then finally, boundaries. Boundaries yeah. are very important. A lot of people think, just like you said, creating boundaries is selfish. But no, creating boundaries actually makes for healthy relationships. Because if you're in a relationship where the other person is controlling every single thing you do, that's an unhealthy relationship. So you have to immediately create boundaries. When it comes to my space, when it comes to how I dress, when it comes to how I speak, when it comes to what I want to say and the decisions I make for myself, that's my, you know, area. That's my zone. And I'm allowed to make those decisions. No one else. You can suggest. You can advice you can make your opinion known but that doesn't mean the other person is required to on board right so you have to create those parameters where you know you're not going to end up in a situation where the whole toxic cycle is just repeating itself yeah. very very well highlighted point because uh, we sometimes, you know, fear, we sometimes hesitate to say no to, to certain things that we do not probably agree with. And unfortunately, just because everybody seems to agree with it, we just, you know, get on the bandwagon and we just, you know, go with the flow. And, uh, you know, sometimes you're not happy with, uh, inside, of the end, but you're so like afraid because, you know, you're thinking what what will happen if I, if I say a no, I mean, uh, I might get mistreated or something bad would happen. Yeah, so we need to we need to change this ideology somewhere. As if we need to set up parameters, we need to uh, establish boundaries. We need to uh, care for ourselves, as you said, very important. When we don't, and we, it's not if, important to invest I, too much time or effort dealing with toxic people. Definitely, definitely. And I, I just want to add there that it's also important to try to shift from this mindset of pointing the finger or blaming. 
blaming i've always said never achieves anything if you're blaming someone for something the only thing you're trying to do is just shift responsibility and it doesn't help the other person doesn't help yourself there is no consequence at all of blaming except you feel bad about it right that's literally it so i think if you're the kind of person who's blaming in a relationship think about one why are you blaming is it justified is it justified and what can you do besides blaming right because there's always a constructive way that you can resolve any situation and if you're going to continue blaming the other person or even blaming yourself as i've seen as well in my practice that it's also easy to point the finger just to say i'm the one who's the problem you know neither of those is going to help anyone you need to do something about it you need to come um come out from that kind of mind frame um and just on that i i just remembered is don't run away from arguments i think that's very important mm -hmm. sometimes you have a build up of emotion sometimes there's a lots of things that you've put under the carpet you know because of your culture and if you're leading to an argument let that happen right because sometimes that argument what it can do is it can push you to resolve something it can push you to actually say what you've been hesitating to say all this time because when there's a communication problem there's that gap in information and so sometimes you need that argument to really happen so you can resolve whatever communication issue there was or whatever misunderstanding there was or to just just be frank about what exactly has happened right um that's not to say that you should harm anyone or yourself that's not to say that you should start throwing things no we're not advocating for that but sometimes arguments are very healthy and they can really give you a snapshot into the other person's mind so you can start feeling like oh that's why you did what you did cuz i didn't know you know um yeah. so it's really healthy to have that argument true very true i think sometimes we don't see ourselves from the outside picture um until we're alerted or or informed about so um it is very good to communicate i think you mentioned this before as well that communication is the key so you know we need to sit down and speak instead of piling up our feelings you know sitting in two different rooms and just thinking about it um uh, and exhausting our ourselves with rage and anger and fear because i've seen this happens a lot you're not communicating and you know you're just getting frustrated and fuming and finally it explodes and uh, it becomes a total mess and now the, the entire relationship gets spoiled so we don't want that to happen as well so yes as mentioned we need to uh, have those arguments sometimes in a very constructive manner so constructive criticism uh, i would put it in that way is uh, you know good for feedback and stuff and uh, yeah that that's it for today um would you like to share uh, anything um, in the fight i i mean on a, on an ending note sister sara would you like to share anything with our viewers for today's program on this topic um yes i would like to share two things firstly you can't always get a relationship right you can't always get a relationship perfect you know if there are issues in your um relationship with your sibling with a family member with a friend you really value with your partner try to firstly not be so hard on yourself because there's no perfect formula for any relationship and secondly if you are finding it difficult go to therapy go to therapy because there is no shame in trying to get specialist help for your relationship i cannot say this enough you know therapy even just for an individual is so enlightening it helps you become more self aware it helps you deal with things that maybe you're carrying from the past and you don't realize you're carrying it and it's coming out in your relationship right so go to therapy and try to resolve it it's a very healthy way and the best part of it is you're not doing it blindly you're doing it with a specialist trained to help you who's you know dedicated years to learn about this and how best 
to help a, a couple or you know two people who are just trying to resolve their relationship issues so please 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 consider therapy that's number one number two you deserve to be your own person you have to remind yourself that every day whenever there is something happening in you know your particular relationship whenever there's someone blaming you pointing the finger at you trying to control your life making you f um try to be a perfect person you know um or disregarding what you're saying undervaluing you all these things that we've mentioned today you have to stand by and remind yourself you deserve to be your own person no two people are the same and i think this is reminding me of a quote from Emilia. He said, every person is born free, right? Every person is born free. The only person, the only time we are bowing down is to Allah. You cannot bow to any human. You cannot obey any human. You can only obey him. So remind yourself that you deserve to be your own person. You deserve to make your own decisions. And most importantly, you deserve to look for yourself. So it's a very important reminder. Sometimes I need to remind that myself as well. So I thought I'd share that with everyone. When things get hard, remind yourself that you're important. Jazakallah. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarah, for taking your precious time out and sharing your knowledge and your expertise with us, your experience with us. And uh, I'm very grateful to you. Jazakallah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for inviting me. I hope that anything from today is helpful to anyone who's listening um and yeah alhamdulillah thank you so much thank you so much uh, viewers for tuning on today's program and uh, <clears throat> thank you for joining and tuning uh, on on this program i want to thank sister sarah and uh, just a tip and a heads up i know that it's the 14th of february it's a valentine's day but this program is not specifically for Valentiners. It's as we uh, saw in, in today's episode, it's related to all sorts of relationships. It can be even with your siblings, your friends, uh, um, uh, your uh, uh, people who are in your workforce area and all of that, um, people within your community as well. So if you are seeing signs of uh, lack of support, controlling behaviors, um, resentment, dishonesty, if you want a uh, change, if you're stuck in an emotional abuse relationship, how do you want to deal with negative people in your life? You know, we, we see a lot of negative people in our life on a daily basis, and it's sometimes really difficult to deal with them, even when you have nothing go going on in your mind. So if you want to learn how to deal with such type of people, then I hope that today's program would be beneficial. And uh, there was a, uh, a lot of good discussion with Sister Sarah Ghulam Hussain. Once again, thank you so much for tuning on today's program. Uh, this is your host, Akina Habib, signing off. Zakumullah, Karen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.